Hi, good, good evening and welcome to the Local Agency Formation Commission County of Kern meeting uh, February 26, 2020. We will start the meeting with our roll call. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Couch. Commissioner McGibbon. Here. Commissioner Morris. Here. Commissioner Scribner. Here. Commissioner Rivera. Commissioner Sanders. Here. Commissioner Bauer. Here. Commissioner McGuire. Commissioner Fowler. Here. Thank you. And next on our agenda will be our Pledge of Allegiance. I'm going to ask Commissioner Sanders to please lead us. So if you could all please stand. Place your hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Okay, item three on our agenda will be the approval of the minutes. Entertain motion. a motion. We have a, a motion from Commissioner Fowler. Second. And I'll, we'll have the second come from Commissioner Morris. Um, is this a, uh, please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. The next item on the agenda are public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. I'm looking out to see if there are any members of the public. I don't see any today that are requesting to make comments and so we'll move on to the next item which are our noticed public hearings. Um, we have and I don't, we don't have any notice public hearings, and so we'll go on to item number six, public project review. We do have two items under this, item A and B, and staff is going to combine the presentations, but we will take separate votes, and so I'll ask Mr. Knox if he um, would like to begin his presentation, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before you have item 1767, Kern Delta Water District, this is a sphere of influence amendment, and 1766, Kern Delta Water District, annexation number three. In SOI, uh, both would be handled with one presentation, two recommendations, and two votes. Last meeting, we heard a presentation regarding the effects of Sigma on local water supplies, storage, and delivery. If you were not at the last commission meeting, you can catch the video of the meeting via a link on the Kern Lafco website. This month, we get another example of action water districts are taking to meet Sigma standards. Kern Delta, in conjunction with Arvin Edison Water Storage District, has a joint project to groundwater recharge on five parcels. On November 1st, 2019, Kern Delta submitted an application for annexation number three and an SOI amendment. The application was deemed complete on February 4th, 2020. The proposal is to annex 150.80 acres generally located west of South Edison Road, north of Sunset Boulevard, and east of Kern Delta Water District's uh, Eastside Canal. We have the map up on the screen if you uh, need to take a look at that. The sphere of influence, uh, several of these parcels are not within the sphere of influence. Approval of the annexation cannot be completed without a corresponding sphere of influence amendment. The applicant has signed an indemnification agreement. There are no tax increases. The five parcels are zoned for agricultural use. This annexation will not cause any zone changes is con consistent with the commission policies. There's no ag land conversion and conforms to assessor's parcels. This does have a functional overlap. These five parcels will both be in Arvin Edison Water Storage District and Kern Delta Water District as this is a joint project. We have a letter from Arvin Edison acknowledging this arrangement. And the question of adequate water supply. This application brings up an interesting question. How to define water use. Technically, there will be more water used on these five properties than are, that are currently fallow, but the purpose of the project is to apply surplus water and help raise the groundwater level in the area. Theoretically, it is increase the long-term water supply, stabilizing potential soil subsidence and pushing back possible saltwater intrusion that happens in some areas of the valley floor. It is not anticipated that the district would provide water 
for farming or crop growing purposes or other services to these five specific properties at this time. While this annexation would facilitate water use, the purpose is to raise the water table and increase available water within the district. As the district owns these five parcels, there's 100% consent. Therefore, the applicant has requested that uh, notice hearing and protest hearing be waived. And CEQA is handled by notice of exemption on both the sphere of influence and, and annexation. And these both have been adopted by the applicant. With that, I have a recommendation for the sphere of influence, which is to adopt by resolution the sphere of influence as presented, including the notice of exemption adopted by the district and conditions recommended by the executive officer. And a second recommendation for the annexation is recommended that the commission adopt by resolution the proposed annexation, consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant, waive notice, hearing, and protest hearing, and approve annexation number 1766 with conditions set by the executive officer. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Do we have any questions from any of the commissioners before I go to the public? Okay, seeing none, I'll ask if there are any members of the public that would like to make comments on either items A or B under number six. Okay, seeing none then, I'll return to the commission for action. Um, the, uh, this is gonna require two votes, so first let's deal with item A. Motion. We have a motion from Commissioner Fowler to adopt the resolution. Second. And a second by Commissioner Bauer. Any other discussion? Please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. And now on item B, I've already asked for public comment on both items, and so I'll ask the commission to uh, make a motion for action on item B. Motion to approve. We have a motion from Commissioner Sanders. Second. And a second from Commissioner Morris. Please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. And next would be item seven, there, but there are no commission items, and so we'll go on to item number eight under general business. First A is the approval of claims list number 20-02. I'll, motion. I don't, we have a motion from Commissioner Fowler. Second. And a second from Commissioner Bauer. Please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. Now item B is audit services engagement letter. I'll ask Mr. Knox if you have any comments on this item. Sure, this is an informational item. Uh, we have a three year agreement with Brown Armstrong to do audit services. This is we've a letter outlining the audit process for the 1920 uh, uh, fiscal year. Um, there are no substantial changes on, on how an audit is handled and the price is exactly the same as it was last year. Uh, this needs a signature of the chair for us to uh, approve the engagement and move forward. Other than that, it's already a done deal. Okay, thank you, Mr. Knox. Any comments from members of the public? Okay, seeing none, then I'll return to the commission. Um, actually, this, this is just an informational item, so this doesn't require action. Correct. Thank you. Um, executive officer, miscellaneous items. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, recently, the county has uh, put up a new website LAFCO, uh, the ha county hosts our website, our web pages, and so this is a change for, for us. And so we have a new look and a new process in which to put stuff on our website, uh, which we're working our way through with the county staff. Uh, hopefully we, there are enough changes that we can do everything we want to on the website. In the past, we haven't had enough room to do uh, videos, we figured out a way around that by using YouTube and using a link. Uh, we, we should be doing things like putting a year's worth of our agendas and minutes on our website. This should allow us to do that as well. Uh, eventually, we would like to be able to put maps and those type of items on the website. If somebody wants to know where their Rec and Park District boundaries are, they can go to the website and 
click a button and find out where those are. That would be very helpful. But we still don't have room for that. We're, we're still working towards those kind of improvements to the website. We are in the process, and we've talked about this before, of a formation of a new district for Weldon Regional Water District. In researching this, and I've spent quite a bit of time with Tom uh, trying to answer this question, what are the, the actual steps we need to take to go through the process? When we look, when we look at that, we look at the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act, but we also look at the principal act that controls water districts. In some places, those two conflict on which proceeding, type of proceeding you're gonna go through. Cortese Knox says when there's a conflict, the commission itself actually has the ability to make a decision on which one to choose. Uh, so I could either bring you back a, uh, examples next time of how this needs to, to be rolled out, or you give me authority to uh, make that decision on how it's going to, to roll out, and we go from there. Uh, some of these questions could be, what happens when we have, to, if, if it's approved, you have to have an election of a board. Well, if five people run and there's five seats, do you actually have to have an election and go through the expense of an election? We have to answer those kind of questions. If um, we don't have a protest hearing, do we still have to notify everybody through the process, including 500, 300 feet and those beyond? Um, some of those are included one in one, but not in the other. So those, those kind of things we have to decide. Uh, so I'm kind of looking for a little direction from you if you want me to bring something back next next month or if you just want me to make a decision and move forward um, on how we do that with Tom's blessing and a nice letter from him outlining how the process works. <laughs> Tom, do you have anything you want to add to that? I got it. You're on. Uh, no, I think Blair mentioned it Clearly, uh, there is a, a main inconsistency between the Water Code and the Cortese Knox Hertzberg, and that is on the for formation election. The Water Code actually requires a formation election, even if there's no protest. Uh, we've determined that it's Cortese Knox, and actually it's the commission that decides whether there will be an election, not the Water Code. But there's a number of those kinds of inconsistencies, and many of them, <clears throat> if we have to keep bringing them back to the commission for decisions, slows down the process enormously and makes his job very difficult. Mm -hmm. And so I think what Blair is asking, uh, uh, and, the, and the code allows for this, Cortese Knox allows for you to give him the authority to make those kinds of procedural decisions without bringing it back to you each and every time. I am aware that this commission has always sided on the, on the side of informing more people than less. I, that's not what I'm asking for. Um, so you will see the process all the way through. If you have a, a disagreement with me on that, that's, that's perfectly fine. We'll, we'll work it out. Um, but yeah, I, I know the sensitivity about making sure everyone is, is notified that needs to be notified. Very good, okay, I'll ask the commission, does anyone have any, any comments? On this, any thoughts? I'm just, Commissioner I'm, Fowler? I'm just interested in some information about where the conflicts exist, just for FYI, but I have confidence that you can make a good decision with uh, the council's advice. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we should have to um, reinvent the wheel each time. Mm -hmm. Do, I, I don't think we, we this need is, a this isn't a, this You're is asking for some direction. Direction, yes. not, an actual, not an actual decision. Right, I, yeah. I will bring something back to you where you can make a decision. <laughs> okay, very good. Well, then, um, I, I, my thoughts, I think, it sounds like we all are in agreement. We, we want it, the process to be expeditious, but we want to make sure that there's transparency and that we're aware of it. Um, but, you know, we have confidence that between the two of you that you'll, you'll bring us back um, the... Uh, Something you know, something to consider that that uh, um, we'll look forward to that. Yeah, I will outline what the how the process is going to work, and Tom will write a letter explaining why that that's the legal way of moving forward. 
Very good. Any other comments? Okay, that uh, concludes our business for this evening. And so. Oh, I, I have more. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Uh, twice now I've tried to convene the policy committee to address substantially surrounded. Uh, we have been unsuccessful of doing that. I'd like to give it another shot here soon. Um, so I want to bring that up. Uh, there also has been some movement with CalAFCO due structures. Um, CalAFCO had a board meeting uh, last Friday of which I participated by phone. I didn't go to San Diego, darn it. Um, so there, there was a kind of half win and half loss. And the half win is the board asked for a committee to be reconvened to relook at the due structure. The loss is that they can't make a decision on it per their bylaws until next year. So if we're going to continue with CalAFCO, we're going to have to pay the full dues this year. Um, but they have agreed to reconsider those in the, in the future. That's one piece of LAFCO, Cal LAFCO news. The second is that the executive director, Pamela Miller, has announced that she's going to step down uh, later this year. She's going to stick around and train somebody, bring somebody along once the board has decided who to bring on, uh, but she has decided to step down. We're also in the process of gathering nominations for the special, one special district seat. Uh, we have, I think, until middle of next, next month for those nom no nominations mm -hmm. to come in. Uh, just a reminder of folks, if you know of any special district uh, folks that would be interested in serving on, on, on LAFCO, uh, let's get their nomination in and get them on the, on, the, on the ballot. I'm also aware that Commissioner McKibben would also, is also interested in continuing on the commission. So... Um, Wish him well. Uh, next month, I'll bring uh, the preliminary, preliminary budget before you. It doesn't look significantly different than what we see in the past. Uh, also next month, I've been called a jury duty. So I'm not sure how much time that's going to take of mine, but uh, it's early in, the, early in the month, so hopefully it goes quickly or you know, they let me go. Also want to remind you that we will not be meeting on the fourth Wednesday of next month. We push that back a month, a week, sorry, because we're, the staff is going to be at the CalAFCO workshop uh, the week before. So the next meeting will be April 1st, um, right here in the Board, board of Supervisors Chambers. And that's the end of my, my comments. Could I ask a question about the special district um, situation? Sure. Um, can there be more than one representative from a special district on the LAFCO board? From the same district? From the same special district. It's up to the district. Uh, I believe that's up to the district uh, selection committee or group. Don't they meet every so often and, and select? No, we, we do this completely by ballot. By ballot, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I don't, I don't know of anything that says that they can't, but I will go back and research it and confirm that with you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none, then that, no. that does bring us to the end of our agenda, and so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn, please. Motion. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.